Thank you so much for staying with us. This is Y254. Why in the morning is the program time for politics. And now we want to talk about the BBI and the youth. What's your feel? What's your take on the proposals if you have met it? Actually, it is in the dailies. If you could get your copy and try to go through it and see what you need to support or not to support, it's your opinion. No one will drag you down for the same. I'm speaking to young people here who have different takes on this BBI, I have Anita Mbai, she's a program coordinator at Young Women Leaders Connect. And also I'm speaking to John Wangai, Chairman Kenya Interfaith Youth Council. Send us your comments or, or your concerns and reactions to all our social media platforms, Y254 channel on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram as well. Welcome to the broadcast. My name is Dereva Hilewi. Lady and gentlemen, karibuni sana. BBI will be a report will be launched today. Have having received uh, by the received by the president on Thursday, and uh, some support was drummed up in uh, the Nyanza region, and now partly in Nairobi and Mount Kenya Kidogo. Today to be launched at Bomas of Kenya, and I'm afraid we're going to have to check out who President Amengesai. Now, <laughs> <laughs> I want to begin with you, Anita. What's your take on the current report that we have, briefly? Um, first of all, uh, Hilary, let me thank you this morning for giving me the opportunity to mm -hmm. hear my opinion as a youth. And uh, let me start by saying that uh, BBI um, is a constitutional imperative, um, you know, to seek peace, mm -hmm. uh, security, and also to enhance the national cohesion of this country. Um, let me also add that um, improving governance uh, to meet the expectation of Kenya mm -hmm. is um, it is constitutional, and um, just like every constitution in the world, mm -hmm. amendments keep on happening. Right. And um, this this strengthens the rule of law. Mm -hmm. um, this also depends our constitutionalism, mm -hmm. and this is definitely a right a step in the right direction. All right, John. How do you feel about the current report that we have? Uh, thank you, Hilary, for hosting us here. It's such a pleasure. Mm -hmm. Well, first, let me say that, uh, uh, just as the president said, that uh, yeah, cons the constitutional rigidity mm -hmm. is not uh, is not important as that. But at the current uh, situation that we are in as a country, mm -hmm. we understand that the economy mm -hmm. has been ravaged by the pandemic, the coronavirus pandemic. Mm -hmm. Our students, our children are at home. Mm -hmm. The schools are not yet open. The small micro medium enterprises, uh, a lot of them are shut down. Well, basically the economy is not doing well. Mm -hmm. So I think as a country, the priority at the moment should be how we can, you know, try to revamp back the economy. Mm -hmm. Before then we can talk of a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if you look at the current constitution, the current constitution worldwide mm -hmm. has been termed as a, one of the best progressive constitutions that uh, that we have as a country. And so, uh, and even with the current constitution, we have not been able to implement mm -hmm. even at least 70% of it, because when you look, for example, at the... Well, we remember the current constitution uh, it, uh, basically has four main elements mm -hmm. that it came with, that is uh, public participation, the Bill of Rights, independence of institution and separation of powers mm -hmm. and devolution. At the moment when you look at things like the Bill of Rights, mm -hmm. Article 43 talks of economic and social rights. At the moment as we speak, there are people who still strip hungry. There are children who cannot access the basic education. Mm -hmm. And when you talk of devolution, we know at the moment there are counties which have not yet received their, 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 their money to pay workers. Mm -hmm. Doctors and nurses are on strike. So I think uh, the priority is an issue at the moment. Okay. Let us first think on how we can live up the economy mm -hmm. and then the constitutional amendments will come a bit later. Mm -hmm. Actually, you guys do know Mumeji Koroga because Babu, <laughs> already you have set the pace. Uh, you can you can already tell the people I'm handling. Kuna mwenye ataki na kuna mwenye anataka. So let's begin with you, Anita. Why do you feel like uh, it's the time is ripe for us to change our constitution and in favor of the young people. Yeah. Well, um, Hillary, I would like to agree with uh, my friend uh, and good Senator Wangai here 
that uh, indeed this is a very uh, miserable moment for Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, we've suffered a pandemic that has really ravaged our economy. There's a lot of ho helplessness in terms of uh, the unemployment. Mm -hmm. But then again, I feel like we are also dwelling on the dark aspects. Mm -hmm. And for the BBI, for example, BBI is proposing uh, like a, a seven, the, the, the tax holiday uh, for the youth businesses in Kenya. That is a great step uh, towards ensuring that every youth who sets business in this country mm -hmm. is able to be given a great period of, uh, of course, uh, setting up their businesses, making sure that uh, they have enough returns before uh, they can, of course, uh, start being, paying back the tax. Mm -hmm. So um, these are very good recommendations uh, with the BBI, and this gives confidence for every youth of this country to set out businesses because i mean this grace period of seven years um allows um, allows a lot of confidence secondly um hillary there's also uh, the establishment of uh, the, the 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 data and the technological hubs uh, in villages uh, that seeks to imitate the the taobo villages of of china mm -hmm. uh, i was reading an article this morning and i was really impressed um that when you look at those villages in China, they have been able, through accessing internet for the youth, mm -hmm. they were able to, to rake around um, 195 billion mm -hmm. um, you know, dollars in 2018. So this, this, this means that when youth are given these favorable conditions, they are going to tap into the tech, they are mm -hmm. going to tap in the e-commerce, and they are going to empower themselves and, of course, realize economic prosperity mm -hmm. and also... Um, inclusivity when it comes to, to, to economy. Mm -hmm. So these are very good things in the BBI. Mm -hmm. And um, for, 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 for the amendments, just like I said, um, constitution is not, it is not a fixed thing. It keeps on undergoing metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. So I feel like time is right for us to, to adjust a few things. Mm -hmm. And then after maybe five years, 10 years, let's see how this works. And then again, we can do a referendum. Uh, just a quick one on yes. overall uh, change of the constitution. We are barely 10 years after the promulgation of this constitution, 2010 constitution that we are using. We haven't even implemented fully the constitution that we want to amend. Why, wh wh why do we have to change and we haven't even f implemented the same constitution? Well, um, uh, uh, okay, I'll answer that question by, um, okay, uh, uh, for example, give an example with the Youth Commission that has been widely proposed, mm -hmm. and I support that. Um, for a very long time, um, we, we've had, uh, there's of course the National Youth Council that, um, of course, uh, presents the, the matters of youths, mm -hmm. but clearly we've not had um, policy coherence uh, towards uh, what the National Youth Council stands for. So uh, we, with the National um, Youth Commission that is being proposed by the BBI, um, it allows us to mainstream um, youth development you know, projects, be it be maybe in agriculture, maybe in trade, in industry, and this allows um, youth to be entrenched you know, in the real constitution. And through this, we can be able to, um, you know, we, we can be able to honestly, I, I think, have a world outreach instead of, uh, for example, constraining youth in the Ministry of, you know, Gender and Public Service. Mm -hmm. This more um, youth get more opportunities in that, guided by the constitution. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. John, yes. why do you feel like we shouldn't be uh, amending the constitution at such a time. <coughs> yes, thank you, Hillary. Yes, as I said, that at this moment, uh, constitutional amendments mm -hmm. they are not part of our priority <coughs> as a country. Sorry. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I can maybe touch a little on uh, what my good friend has said, Actually. that the amendments are proposing a tax holiday for youth seven years tax holiday. Mm -hmm. These are things that clearly need a policy change or registrative uh, process. They don't necessi necessitate an, a, a referendum. Mm -hmm. We all know that uh, the reason we're going for referendum is to get uh, the big boys' positions. That is every Kenyan know. Mm -hmm. But now, because they have to entice the youth, they have to come up with uh, things like a, 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 a tax waiver or a, a grace period of help. Mm -hmm. These are things, I mean, these things that can be done administratively. Mm -hmm. 
by a policy of our, our legislative process. Mm -hmm. When you talk of the incubation centers that uh, has been indicated in the in the report, mm -hmm. these are things that you know. Just one day, the president can come and you know make an executive order. The CS in charge for trade can come up with such incubators. And at the moment, we have seen that, for example, we have uh, uh, technical centers being built even to the constituency level. So mm -hmm. I think these are not things that should be basically in a, in a constitutional uh, amendment proposal. Mm -hmm. When you talk of things like a grace period of four years for the health, if these people really care about the youth, what they should do first is to, you know, uh, they should clear first all the, all the, de all the debtors mm -hmm. who have not paid the health fee. When you look at, uh, for example, when they were campaigning, you saw them uh, go to uh, places like, uh, you know, Western, and they would, uh, you know, uh, help them, uh, the sugarcane industry. Mm -hmm. They would wave up all their, uh, their, their areas. That is the same thing that they would do to people who have defaulted health fees, mm -hmm. because these people have not defaulted health fees by, you know, uh, wanting to do it, it's lack of em un uh, employment, I mean. Mm -hmm. When you talk of Article 55, it talks about the youth. And it says that the state shall ensure that the youth have, you know, access to um, employment, access to education, mm -hmm. access to other basic, uh, you know, facilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, even as we talk about that, last year, late last year, we saw that the president appointed uh, the, 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 the former Zaya MP, Mary, Wom Mary Womboy, I think. Mm -hmm to be the chairperson of the National Employment Authority. That was a strap in the youth's face. <laughs> so clearly you can see these people have no in good intentions for the youth mm -hmm. because National Employment Authority is the one that is supposed, you know, to ensure that the youth have employment just as it has uh, been outright in the Youth Commission. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so clearly you see that these are sweeteners which are meant to entice the youth to support the document mm -hmm. so that the big boys can have positions. When you, when, when, uh, when you, when you, see, when you look at something like uh, in the bill, mm -hmm. uh, the youth commission that they are, that, that, that they are talking about, mm -hmm. the youth commission that they are talking about, already we have the National Youth Council, we have the NYC Act, we already made the proposals to amend the, the Act and it has already been passed in assembly. Mm -hmm. So what we need uh, basically is uh, political goodwill. Uh, at the moment, the NYC is not being funded properly and so it cannot run its functions well. Mm -hmm. Number two, the youth were supposed to elect the representative to the, to the National Youth Council. But the same process have been, over the time, been frustrated by the same minister. Mm -hmm. Because at the moment uh, we, we came up after a, 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 a public participation, we came up with a good election guidance. Mm -hmm. And what was remaining was uh, the CS, uh, that uh, CS uh, Mosheru, to gazette the, the guidance, just gazetting men, ga the gazettement of the guidance, so that now the youth can elect the representative. Mm -hmm. So you see, this is a continual frustration of the youth, but now they have to entice us with such sweeteners, mm -hmm. which can be amended by either, you know, policy or registrative process. Mm -hmm. It does not necessitate a referendum. All right. You, you have uh, majorly spoken of the position, and I'm like, is it not possible for a young person to become the president and the deputy and the prime minister? Can't we have those positions if it is for them? Because now we're thinking it is for the big boys. Now, can't we have even young people who will benefit from the positions once they have been created? Well, yeah. oh. <laughs> I, I want him to respond <laughs> on that and that maybe you will weigh in because he has argued they want the position. Of course, oh, currently we can tell who is there. Yes. We can predict. <laughs> but surely it's an allegation. Yes. But speaking, because it's a constitution that it's something that will be in the constitution moving yes. forward if it will pass. Yes. Don't we have young people who become the president and the deputy and the prime minister and the deputies, of course, the position we're speaking of? Will we have young people? Thank you, Hilary. Yes, yes, yes. I, 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 I totally agree with you that, uh, yeah, the youth need to, you know, dream big. That uh, uh, when you read a book by a person I, 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 I like so much, uh, uh, Fans Fanon, he wrote a book called The Wretched of the Earth. And he says that uh, each generation, must rise out of its obscurities, discover its mission, and either fulfill it or betray it. Mm -hmm. When we come here in, in, our, in our country, um, our forefathers, who we celebrated last week uh, during the Mashujade, mm -hmm. they fought for our independence. The young Turks fought for the second liberation, also called uh, the multipartism, mm -hmm. the repeating of the section 2A. Mm -hmm. Then the likes of the former CJ Mutunga and Professor Kibwana fought for the clamor for the constitutional change, which began in 1990s. 
and a lot of branch blood was shed, people lost lives, properties were destroyed, so that we can enjoy the fundamental rights and freedoms that we're enjoying with this constitution. Mm -hmm. And this generation of ours, now I keep asking ourselves, how will we be remembered by you know our children and grandchildren? Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea to dream big, but we know that uh, an election, a presidential election in this country, uh, cost not less than 50 billion. I don't know how many youths can afford such, even if we are 70% of the population. Mm -hmm. Even if we, we, we decide, Hillary, to front you <laughs> and do for you a fundraising, <laughs> we cannot even reach half of the 50 billion. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea, but at the moment, mm -hmm. we clearly know that uh, because they are the people with the, you know, the resources, mm -hmm. they are just interested with the, the, the position for the big boys. Mm -hmm. now, num number two, when you, t when you look at that uh, document, it would be wise for the uh, frame as the 14-member task force committee mm -hmm. to indicate, to specifically indicate that the position of the deputy prime minister will go to a youth, mm -hmm. that the position of the deputy prime minister, this one, will go to a woman. Mm -hmm. As a person also supports gender, actually I'm one of the petitioners who wrote to CJ Maraga to advise president to dissolve parliament. Mm -hmm. And we are waiting for the president to dissolve parliament. Mm -hmm. When you talk about gender, they have clearly indicated that a governor should get a deputy governor of the opposite gender. But when you look at the big boys table, that, people, that, that one has been left vacant. So I think what we should do mm -hmm. immediately after the lunch, they should come back again to the people. Let us have just, you know, on Mashuja, uh, <coughs> the president in his remarks he said that, uh, mm -hmm. just as the deputy president had said, that we need a robust national conversation. Mm -hmm. Let us have a robust national conversation you know, uh, bring everyone to the table, let us have our views, let us look at the uh, draft document, mm -hmm. so that now we can come up with a final document mm -hmm. which uh, will maybe bring a consensus. We mm -hmm. don't need to go to, a, you know, a pop -pop to, to polarize the country again with the politics. Mm. Okay. All right, Anita, okay. as you weigh into that particular uh, statement of the positions, yes. you have heard of the uh, reasons as to why he doesn't want the BBI. Absolutely. Please tell me you have something to tell us why he well, should be thinking of other ways. Absolutely. So first of all, I think I, I've, I've got a few issues to clarify. Mm -hmm. um, first, um, the issue of the costing of the BBI process has not yet been done. Mm -hmm. But as a, you know, as a step of good faith, I believe um, at the end of the 11th parliament, the MPs can probably you know, take uh, a cost mm -hmm. And, and also, it's also good to know that the CSG is also on its third cycle. So, um, we have, we of course, uh, it's, it's doing uh, its evaluation, and this is, of course, the best time to bring the cost of everything down. Mm -hmm. So, so far, BBA has not been uh, costed. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, what I would like to say is that, uh, still weighing on the, on the, on the issue of uh, why amendments are very critical, mm -hmm. um, well, speaking as a youth and speaking on BBA, oh, um, on behalf of women, mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to highlight on governance. Uh, this structure gives more voice. Uh, the BBA report, of course, gives um, more structure uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, wider variety of persons. Um, of course, uh, in the talent, uh, in the current uh, pool of uh, the, the suggested. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, okay. The BBA report gives a balanced aspect to mm -hmm. the governance pair. For example, we have, um, we have, for example, if if maybe a CS is a politician, we're going to have a PS as a technocrat. Mm -hmm. This, of course, means that th there's going to be a more balanced opinion, and um, this cocktail is going to, of course, lead to a better governance. Secondly, um, Hillary, let me allow me to highlight on, of course, the aspect of gender mm -hmm. equality, which I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, in the 11th Parliament, uh, we saw that it was not possible, the MPs could not uh, pass the to that gender rule. Mm -hmm. And with the BBI report, it is giving very clear recommendations that allow women to take more governance spaces. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a step in the right direction. And this also means that uh, if, the, if the BBI, of course, report sails through, uh, for the very first time in 60 years, we are likely to see a woman candidate. Mm -hmm. I mean, a woman descend to the highest office on land, which mm -hmm. is a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, but, but that majorly will depend with the populace because we are the electorates who we, we know the dispensation of our people and we know how we will vote. Yes, but however... Do you think we will be convinced enough as a people to vote for a woman as a president? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. The structures are very clear mm -hmm. and um, I believe uh, the, 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 the drumming for support is going to be enough mm -hmm. uh, to convince us why we should, uh, of course, elect more, um, more women in office. Mm -hmm. But then again, um, I would also like to go to the common... Uh, Mm -hmm. uh, um, common recommendations that is telling the youth to read the document, let them get to understand what it's all about, let us have conversation around it, mm -hmm. and um, let us decide. So this is not like the final, it is not the final, it's just the start. We're just warming up to the process, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure we're going to make the best decision towards this. But it's definitely a step in the right direction. You know, big, big Hillary, yes. <coughs> to, to, to add on that a little bit, I say I'm, I second what she has said, that uh, this is a process. Hmm? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> what, what I'm saying <laughs> is that what she has saying that yeah. mm -hmm. this document is not cast on, you know, yeah. that we need to be, um, to be amended, mm -hmm. to be amended so that we can fine tune mm -hmm. and come up maybe with a document mm -hmm. that reflects the will of the people, yeah, you know. When you look, for example, at the issue of gender, I'm also very passionate about uh, gender equality and parity. Mm -hmm. We need these big seats mm -hmm. to be clearly indicated that the deputy, when you have a president who is a male, mm -hmm. the deputy president should be a female, clearly indicated, like they have indicated the governor. Mm -hmm. They are yeah. saying that if you are vying for a governor, the deputy governor should be a female, or yes. on the, on the, on the, on the, the opposite. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the, the, the deputy prime minister, this one should be a youth. I think as a youth, we should leave this document soberly. We should not just be, you know, doing to support it because of uh, help waivers or grace period, mm -hmm. uh, incubation centers. You know, these are things that can be, uh, can be you know, uh, amended having goodwill from the political leaders. Mm -hmm. We can have a, a, a grace period for help. The help CEO can declare today. You don't need a referendum for that. We can have incubators uh, put in the budget and, you know, constructed. But before we support this document, mm -hmm. Let us first ensure that we have a substantive, uh, our substantive agenda mm -hmm. has been, you know, highlighted in the document. Mm -hmm. If we have uh, the deputy prime, min deputy prime minister, two of them, let those positions be for the youth. When you look, you know, I don't know, you know, the, with the youth, I don't know what uh, the problem basically with that. When you see yesterday, mm -hmm. the people the, uh, living with disabilities, read uh, by Maura, they clearly gave their, uh, you know, Reservations on the same, and they saying that if you are not giving us uh, a number of CSS to be clearly indicated, we are not supporting this document, and we will rally our over five million members to reject it out. Mm -hmm. But I support what was said that the document is not cast on stone. Yes. Let us bring it to the people. Yes. Let us see what to amend, what mm -hmm. to remove. Yes. Because at the moment we are being told that nobody can stop reggae. So I think <laughs> that is not the narrative. <laughs> this is not reggae. This needs a robust national conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, Anita, do, 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 do you think we need the grace period to pay our help or we need jobs? Because you're supporting. Oh yeah, I think um, we need both. We need both. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a, a grace period, uh, of course, to, to, to pay our help. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, of course, we also need jobs that will give us, you know, the finance to, of course, repay back the loans. Then I'll ask you, how long does it take for a common a young person to get a job after graduating? Well, it depends. It depends. I have seen youth who have started, who have done very well mm -hmm. uh, in terms of others have gone to public service, uh, other t others are in private sector, mm -hmm. others have managed to start their own business. Mm -hmm. But I think the grace period forms a unifying factor mm -hmm. in terms of, um, you know, it, it, gives, it gives us time to, mm -hmm. you know, wallow a little bit. Um, so in your own it opinion, it's fair to everyone? It is fair to everyone. Mm -hmm. It's definitely fair to everyone. Okay, I, I know people who have waited long enough <laughs> <laughs> to get uh, these uh, positions. And then there was also incubation, uh, like he was uh, mentioning. You spoke of the tax. I actually was looking for, for, for the, the 25th uh, tax something. I'm forgetting. I had seen it yesterday, so uh, I've lost it here. Now, 
you have been supporting because of the youth and there's a there's a there's a, another proposal i want i want to read it for you which is employment in the public service yes and of course you know these are the areas when we speak of the ill and the pandemic in the country that corona has come and uh, it ha i think corona will go but I, the other one i don't know whether it will go this is corruption yes now kenyans will give their views on the matter feel that the employment in the public service is not sufficiently inclusive different sections including young people women those living with a disability and marginalized communities feel that they are excluded this could be true you don't want the bbi yes but there's something that is saying they will favor the youth sorry you don't you don't want the bbi yeah. you, you're feeling it is not okay right yeah. now yes, yes but there's a proposal that will favor the young people in terms of employability in terms especially of being employed in the public service in the public service yeah <laughs> Uh, uh, well, uh, how then do you, don't you want to support it then kuna vitu zina favor you other than sasa the tax and the, yeah. the the help what i've said and uh, i want to reiterate and that the current laws that we have are sufficient to ensure that uh, the youth get jobs mm -hmm. the youth get you know favorable opportunities what we need is goodwill from the political class and the mm -hmm. leaders mm -hmm. for example the issue of the grace period the help grace period mm -hmm. that one don't need don't necessitate a referendum and when you look at article 255 of the constitution it clearly uh, outlines what can necessitate a referendum that includes changing the structure of government mm -hmm. changing the structure of devolution changing the bill of rights and and you know the others but things like uh, help grace period that does not necessitate a referendum incubation center that one does not necessitate a referendum these people these people are making this thing look like a total joke how can mm -hmm. you put an incubation center in a, in a, in a national draft like that one? Mm -hmm. when you talk of uh, a public service commission public service commission at the moment many been, actually there's a petition before the national assembly over the same because very many people apply for those jobs mm -hmm. they take years and years before they can even be shortlisted mm -hmm. there was a proposal by and uh, by the government that they will be having interns mm -hmm. that one they took the first cohort they took the second cohort mm -hmm. the first cohort i think has never been paid up to today mm -hmm. the second cohort from when they were called to kasarani i think that program had in there so what we need we will is say basically it's corona covid-19 came yeah covid-19 iliaribu kila kitu how many covid-19 imearibu <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 with the covid-19 yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe that one could be as a, a, a you know a disadvantage on the same mm -hmm. but what i'm saying is that with the, we have in very we have enough laws yeah mm -hmm. what we need is to implement the laws and also goodwill from you know the political class and the leaders for example when you look at the other uh, amendment they are proposing a you know 35% to the counties mm -hmm. Of course I support the devolution. I'm one of the biggest fan of devolution. Mm -hmm. But article 2 or 3 uh, clause 2 says that you know you can take to the counties at least 15%. You know they have set the minimum at 15%. So there's nothing that bars its excellence the president to take 40 or 50%. So we don't need a referendum to change that one. What we need is goodwill and mm -hmm. implementing so, the laws that we have. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I need to see more agitated. Maybe uh maybe to to highlight on something very briefly. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that the public service has actually done a very good job in terms of uh creating paid internships mm -hmm. um for, for for the youth because I I know I know of very many cohorts that have been, you know, absorbed by the public service mm -hmm. um others have finished their internships for one year and it's actually a paid um internship so the public service is indeed walking its talk mm -hmm. and i like the fact that the bba report still emphasizes on the uh, of course the co co continuability of the same and the sustainability of the same mm -hmm. uh and, and maybe probably as i conclude i would like to say that uh Uh, the BBI report provides a chance for Kenya uh, to, of course, enact ambitious reforms, and this is going to help us realize, you know, national cohesion. Mm -hmm. We've had very deep-seated issues as a country in terms of, um, of course, we have a lot of ethnic tensions uh, because uh, other tribes have felt like they have been neglected. Mm -hmm. But for the BBI, it ensures that everyone, every community, feels included. in this country. 
it is also it also charts a far towards uh, of course a more sustainable of course sustainable development mm -hmm. and uh, an inclusive Kenya a Kenya whereby everyone feels that uh, they belong mm -hmm. um, the part of the country and they also contributing to of course uh, national goal w w when you speak of uh, inclusivity you speaking uh, in regards to leadership and of course uh, before before we, we began this broadcast I, I, I gave you a, a uh, a snippet of what has been proposed here, yeah. and you seem you seem to be uh, disagreeing or knowing what they meant because I like I told you one could be favored in because of the other or another person could be favored, f uh, and you'd be left out. Do you think this current proposal favors the young people to get those positions? The policies that have been put in place will they, will they allow a young person to become a leader even even if it means to be the prime minister? The current report that we have is it proposing a, a young person can be employed assuming you have all the education you need yes like the degree like they call for governors yes. someone has this level of education do we need other things like OCG experience a leader and you appointed to be a prime minister because the CSEs we have seen mm -hmm. there are young people mm -hmm. how about if we get to the prime minister will they call for the experience okay first of all uh, Hillary let me let me let me correct you first of all it's very good to be realistic mm -hmm. um, and secondly the BBI report um, proposes for a more wide uh, structure and mm -hmm. of course more openings as uh, how young people can actively participate mm -hmm. secondly when you asked about a young person being a prime minister mm -hmm. um, these positions also need a level of experience you need to <laughs> mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. what has been happening because I'm not 16 years old and, and I want to be an MP I mean that's nonsense yeah. you 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 need to have um, of course have certain qualifications have have certain experiences because I believe um, as leaders we also need experience you also need to um, give you time to experience mm -hmm. and that I think that falls in very well in terms of how you, how well you're able to to to, re, uh, to lead people and how how well mature you are mm -hmm. so um, again I repeat that this is a very solid plan to open up the governance space in terms for for, for women and youth mm -hmm. and it's definitely um, less rigid as uh, as uh, we've we've had before. Mm -hmm. Right. I asked yeah. that question because I know of a young person who is going for the presidency. He's very yeah. young. He tried it once, yeah. but he's still going for it again. And the question of uh, experience and the wisdom of to course. lead the country will come in. Absolutely. And then yeah. the young people are saying, "Kama tu kwa pohi kitu atuchukui." Meaning, even at this point, the young yeah. people will not vote for their own because of the experience and the wisdom Hillary, to, to add on that yes i support that mm -hmm. and that is one uh, basically one of my of my you know the reason why i think even the psc is failing the youth mm -hmm. because uh, when you look at the dailies you'll see psc advertising for a number of jobs and you know uh, some of the requirements are you know huge experiences which uh, are youth basically that five years and below cannot you know mm -hmm. have the same the second point I want to talk about is inclusivity, the inclusion that we are talking about in the BBI report. I remember in 2018 I did present before the, co the, 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 com the committee of uh, the task force, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, I supported inclusivity. But the kind of narrative that is being driven is not what I supported. Mm -hmm. People are talking of tribes in, in government. But Kenya having around 44 tribes, you cannot accommodate everyone. Mm -hmm. in the big structure. So the inclusivity that I supported when I was making my presentation mm -hmm. is including, you know, women, including the youth, the people with the disabilities, people from the marginalized communities, yeah, and the minorities. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of inclusion that we need as a country. Number two. Number three, mm -hmm. uh, again, what, why I'm saying that what we need is goodwill and, you know, implementing the laws that we have. Look at the appointments that we have at the moment. If at the moment we don't have appointments which, you know, uh, uh, look at factors like, you know, tribe, look at factors like gender, mm -hmm. look at factors that, uh, like religion. For example, when you look at the cabinet, the cabinet uh, is not, uh, does not, you know, uh, 
is not full in full compliance mm -hmm. with the two dance gender. Mm -hmm. So if we are not doing such small things, why, why do we need again the BBA? We need first to implement the same. Again, when you talk of uh, my reservations with this uh, document called the BBA report, mm -hmm. you will see that it creates a very powerful precedent. And this is taking us, you know, sincerely speaking, this is taking us back to where we are from. Mm -hmm. And that is not what uh, the, draft, the drafters of the constitution, mm -hmm. led by the late uh, 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 Kitonga, may his soul rest in peace, envisioned. They envisioned a, a, a situation whereby the president will be like a unifying figure, but the BBI proposes a more powerful imperial president. And when you look at, uh, again, what they are creating, the issue of independence of institution and separation of powers, that one has been disbanded. Mm -hmm. When you look at it, they have introduced a judicial bondsman. That is the person, you if I am a judge, the president. Yes, appointed by the president. This is the person who will be checking the judges. That is where we go, that is where we go wrong. Mm -hmm. Because at one point or the other, we may find ourselves in the judiciary and without the independence we will not be able to you know get the justice that we need so i think let us just look at this document let us read it somebody mm -hmm. let, let them come again back to the ground let people participate let everyone be included mm -hmm. and let us come with a very robust document mm -hmm. which have views of 45 million kenyans not a few couple of people all right now i need to just look if bombers your final recommendations <laughs> <laughs> Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, Hilary, for uh, being so kind to that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe my final words would be this, and I'm now speaking on behalf of youth mm -hmm. and women of this country. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that the BBI report uh, specifically um, provides for, uh, it's called the Basic Amendment Act, mm -hmm. uh, that allows provision of sanitary products to all the learning institutions of this country. Um, currently, I've been carrying a lot of campaigns in different counties, mm -hmm. especially during this uh, period of, of, of COVID-19, uh, whereby you've seen a surge of pregnancies, and, you know, early marriages, you know, the FGM. Mm -hmm. We've been really, uh, of course, taking our energy towards that. Mm -hmm. And that means that with this act, it allows for protection uh, protection of uh, children women and girls mm -hmm. and there's going to be more uh, funding to protect um, this the, this vulnerable group of people so any women of this country watching this bba report has got your best interest at heart mm -hmm. and for the first time you've had these issues clearly articulated um, I I in this report so this is a step towards the right direction in that our gender affairs are being taken very seriously mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this topic being very close to my heart i think this is th th this is the right uh, direction towards this however um, just like, uh, j just to echo my, my uh, Wangai's, uh, Senator Wangai's words here, mm -hmm. I urge everyone to read the document. Let them understand. Let them, um, you know, ask questions. Let them question. Let them uh, see what suits them. Let them tear everything bit to bit mm -hmm. uh, before they can definitely support the, the document. Mm -hmm. So, Wasome and Paka we are convinced. But Kwasisi, we... We, we, we like what has been expressed mm -hmm. by the report. Uh, it is a good thing for Kenya, and it is a critical moment that our constitution is going through a metamorphosis, and we welcome the changes. All right, thank you, Anita. John. <laughs> thank you, Hilary, <laughs> for hosting us here. Mm -hmm. mm, again, let me say that uh, I, s I still insist that Kenya is not yet ready for a constitutional amendment. Let us implement the laws that we have. Uh, over the years, we have had commissions, reports. We have had the Kregler report, mm -hmm. the Ndongo report, the Waki report, the GLC report. They have not been implemented. Let us implement them first, and then now we can come to BBI report later, if, you know, mm -hmm. if time allows us. So let us first implement you know, the, the laws and the reports that we have, and then maybe you can think on that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, number two, that this report has a lot of sweetness to attract uh, so that we can support the bill. Mm -hmm. For example, the MCAs have been, uh, you know, and have been added something called the One Development Fund. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you, when, you, when you hear of the One Development Fund, 
you may think it is a such a big big uh, uh, you know uh, development uh, uh, oriented yeah. but when i when i come to when i came to read that uh, what development fund that is why uh, just like uh, senator said here we let us read the document mm -hmm. let us not say that someone has read the document for me and so it is well when you talk of the what development fund they are saying that is five percent of the revenue collected by the county mm -hmm. so for example with this covid and this is a marginalized county you can imagine the revenue that they will collect get five percent of that divide among the counties mm -hmm. you will realize that there are some words i mean the words some of the words will get even ten thousand for development so the, this bill has a lot of sweetness to you know entice us to support it mm -hmm. but the main agenda is to create positions for the big boys mm -hmm. so me personally john Mungai, and the council the, the council which i chair mm -hmm. of the interfaith the youth uh, council and uh, among other religious sectors we are totally against the, the amendment bill as it is mm -hmm. and uh, if it is not cast in stone we may rethink our decision let us involve all kenyans just as the constitution says in uh, article 10 public participation let us involve the 45 million kenyans then we can chart the way forward for this country because uh, the, 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 the kind of trend that we have mm -hmm. is just a few people who are setting the trend for this country. Okay. Let us involve everyone because, you know, everyone's views and, you know, opinions matter in this country. There is no big or small person. We are all equal before the law. All right. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. We are done here. And back home, thank you so much for keeping us company and the views and issues brought out in this program do not represent my opinion or that of Y254 TV. They remain solely for my panelists. They have their own opinion and back home I know you have yours as well. They have been my guest Anita Mbaye. She's the program coordinator, Young Women's Leaders Connect and John Mwangai, sorry, Chairman Kenya Interfaith Youth Council. Thank you so much ladies Thank and gentlemen for you. coming and I, I, I'm hoping it will go your way. I don't know which, which way. <laughs> Otherwise, thank you so much back home for keeping us company. We'll be back up next with the career uh, uh, discussion. Keep it right to fight for my name is Deva Hillary. Good morning.